Hi, this is Brian at Provision Studios, and I want to make a, a quick video today about dithering. Um, I've gotten several uh, emails and comments from subscribers asking about a video for dither. Basically, um, what is it? Why would I use it? Uh, you know, they, they basically they hear in other videos, and maybe when they go in studio, uh, they hear other people talking about dithering. And then you know it's it's not it's not a real um, hot topic because it it's not like um, reverb or delay or d double tracking a vocal or, or something like that. So it's not the coolest topic to bring up in the studio, but it is one of the most important things that you can do in a studio uh, mixing environment um, to your audio. Because it, uh, it is the very last thing that is done uh, to your audio before it hits people's ears. So um, let's first explain what dither is. All right, dither is low volume noise introduced into digital audio when converting from a higher bit resolution to a lower bit resolution. The process of reducing bit resolution causes quantization errors also known as truncation distortion, which if not prevented, can sound very unple unpleasant. To understand this better, we must also understand what bit depth is. In the digital audio domain, bit depth is what defines the number of measurement values to describe the amplitude of a single audio sample. Each bit effectively represents six decibels of dynamic range. For example, a recording made at 24-bit resolution would have a potential dynamic range of 144 decibels. And that is why you want to record at the highest bit depth you can so that you capture the most uh, amount of digital information, digital audio information. Um, the way that I like to describe it is, if you can imagine, uh, your audio is a round ball. And if you were to subject that, that, that ball to a, uh, like a hammer, it would damage that audio. And your audio no longer would be this perfectly pristine round ball. It would have dings and become misformed. Dither is a protective shell that goes around your audio so that when the hammer, which is the downsampling that you do to get your audio at a lower uh, bit depth, the instead of your instead of your audio being chipped away at, this dither protective shell is what is essentially being removed. So you are effectively replace you're, you're you're trading off this low volume noise uh, in, instead of this truncated uh, 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 distortion that you would get from the quantization errors from downsampling. So we're going to jump into a quick session, and I'm going to show you a couple examples of where and how I use dither. So it can be a, uh, a little bit easier to understand that way. All right, let's dive in. Hey, everybody. All right, we're into a real quick session I've got worked up. This is just a uh, stereo mix down of a song I worked on here in the studio with a local artist, a little collaboration. We're going to be focusing on the master bus today. I've got four plugins on here, the L1 Ultra Maximizer from Waves, two Avid plugins, Dither and the Power Dither, and then Ozone's Maximizer. Those are all dithering plugins. Um, I'm gonna actually going to start with the um, this one here. This is the Avid Dither. This has got noise shaping and then your 16 bit. So. The idea is that you run your mix through your main channel. This is your, if you're mastering. 
you have your mastering effects running through uh, a separate bus and then finally on your master fader right before you bounce you put your dithering plug-in on there and ideally you would um, at this point your audio still is at the resolution that it was recorded at you still have not downsampled anything at any point in time uh, the mastering phase is when you introduce dither it's the very last thing you do as you prepare your files to be um, streamed online sent off uh, for uh, uh, CD reproduction um, what whatever your your final medium is that's this is the step where you put your dithering on not while you're mixing not when you send out a file to your friends so they can listen to it and let you know what they think this is the final step that that you do right at, as the ma during the end of the mastering process um, so in other words you don't dither at every stage you don't dither multiple times you only do it once you do it at the very end of the mastering process that's it this uh, plugin right here uh, gives you 16-bit with noise shaping you can turn it on and off that's uh, free with uh, Pro Tools the power dither is the preferred one of the two this comes with three types of noise shaping and also gives you 20-bit and 16-bit instead of the 18-bit that you got here so you you lose the 18 bit option but you gain two additional noise shaping uh, types that you can introduce the l1 gives you uh, the ability to limit and add dither so this is my go-to I use this one on every every mix that I master um, you can turn off your dithering right here you can select your bit depth here your type of noise shaping and even if you want to be in a digital or an analog emulation for where you're sort of entering or introducing your dither in so that's kind of cool I usually set that to analog and um, noise shaping is ultra. That will depend on the material, but I usually select ultra type 2 and then 16-bit uh, for um, anything that you're going to send out of your studio. And the maximizer by uh, Isotope is, uh, is an excellent um, limiter or maximizer as it's called. Um, it allows you to do the same thing you did in L1, and it also allows you to select the type of um, intelligent release controls is what it's called. And uh, you can add some other things here, true peak limiting. Um, so there, there's some really cool things. And what I really like about the uh, this plugin. You've got the, the, the ability with the Ozone 7 suite to have the maximizer in, in, in with the full mastering chain or just as an individual plug-in uh, on its own. So uh, that's kind of cool. That's why I, I, I like to use that as well. But in most cases, I'm going to go with the uh, L1. and um, you put it at the very end now the, these are all are disabled you wouldn't use all these instances I just was show, just showing you as an example of the different ones that you could use but th in, in most cases this would be your very last plug-in I should say in all cases this will be your very last plug-in that um, gets put on your master bus and then you bounce your track down and you're you're good to go um, in, in, in no cases should you ever 
put a, uh, an EQ or a compressor or any type of effect after the dither. That is, again, the dither is always the very uh, last step you do right, right prior to bouncing. Let me actually show you another one while we're here because it, it's another good one. And um, all right, so um, the FGX by Slate, you'll see here it's got a, a dithering where you can actually set the ceiling to wherever you'd want it to be and your bit depth. So you get your bit resolution 24 or 16 bit, and then you can do constant gain monitoring. So what this does is any uh, adjustments you make here to your mastered mix the plugin offsets that increase in level so that you're always listening to it at the same gain level that was hitting the plugin before so even if i turned my gain up to plus 20 db the constant gain monitoring is going to make it sound as if my gain is at zero in reference to before it hits the plugin, so um, it's another great plugin to use. And again, you can see the dither setting, and you can turn your dither on and off. So if you want to uh, introduce the dither after you've done your your mastering, then you turn this on, turn this off, and then bounce. And that's going to give you your full gain with dither uh, uh, mastered mix. All right, so. Those are just a couple examples of what you can use to dither. Either way, if you need any more information on it, there is a boatload of uh, really good information online about dithering. There is um, uh, many opinions on the best way to dither, so I would suggest that you first research the different methods Try a couple out and see which works best for your ear and your equipment and where you're trying to get your material out to. And if you have any questions, as always, you can email me, bbuck822 at gmail.com, or you can certainly leave a comment in the uh, comment section below or a question, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, and share if you would be so kind, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye now.